FPV videos are amazing to most people by themselves. But what if there was a way for you to spice up your videos using After Effects to get something like this? Final round. Hello everyone, my name is Ibrahim and today we're going to learn how to make this effect using After Effects. Now before we start learning how to add neon objects to your footage, it's important that you know how to shoot and process your footage before we start adding those elements in. The first thing you should do when recording your footage is to set your shutter speed to over two times your frame rate. So for example, if you have your frame rate set to 30, then your shutter speed should be about 120. Now generally, we do this to avoid getting too much motion blur so that After Effects can track it properly. The next thing you should do before importing your footage into After Effects is to make sure you stabilize, color correct, and color grade before importing into After Effects. Now again, the reason for this is to make sure that you can create reliable tracking points so that the 3D tracking looks accurate and looks clean. The last thing you're going to need before you go into After Effects is a plugin called Saver from Video Copilot. Now this is a free plugin and it is amazing when you learn how to use it. Now that we have all the technical things set aside, let's head over to the computer and let's get started with the editing process. All right guys, here we have After Effects opened up. We have our scene over here. I'll show you guys what this looks like really quickly. So it's a clip I took a few weeks ago. It's just me cruising through the forest in a park near me. So, over here, I've gone ahead and added something called a 3D tracker. If you type in tracker, you can pull it up. You drag it onto this clip and it should automatically detect it. And it will create 3D points in your scene, just like this. And we'll be using these in a few minutes once we create our shape. The first thing we've got to do before we start the clip and before we add in the neon elements is we need to create the shape that we're gonna use. So you're gonna come up over here to the ellipse tool, a shortcut is Q, and we're gonna click on our scene, make sure we're not, not selected on the clip, because if you select on the clip, it'll create a mask and not a shape. Now you're gonna hold down shift, and you're going to create a small, small circle. You don't want it to be too big, and I'll explain why you shouldn't do that in just a minute. Now, now we have our shape layer. We're gonna click on the shape layer, go over to layer, auto trace, and press okay. Now that uh, we put in auto trace, auto trace kind of creates a mask over that shape. So now we can delete the shape layer. We can go over to our effects, type in saber, and we will drag this saber effect onto that auto trace layer. Now you'll see that it leaves a little line here, a straight neon light, and you kind of want to conform it to that layer mask. So we're going to go over here to the customize the core. We're going to hit this core type and we're going to change it to the layer mask because we're trying to conform it to the layer mask. Now we have our shape in there. It looks really nice, but you can see the glow is very, very strong. So we're going to go over here to the intensity and we're going to just drop it a little bit lower until it's something more desirable. Okay, that's a nice color to me. I'm going to keep it with that. Okay, and now we can disable this layer. Okay, by just clicking that little eye marker. Now we're back at our scene. So this is where we're going to use our 3D camera tracker. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the camera tracker. If you're putting it in, it'll need time to analyze. I've already gone ahead and added it and had it analyzed. So now I'm just going to go through the scene and I'm going to look for a point that I think is pretty consistent, something that has a lot of contrast, something that can retain its position very well. So I see this blue marker right here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to uh, create a solid and a camera. Now we've created that solid, it's over here. And if you just click on that solid, you'll be able to see if it tracks well throughout your scene. So we can see that this object is tracked through our scene pretty well. We're gonna make a cut right here. 
So we know where that is going to be done. Now, now that we have our shape, we want to replace it with this, uh, this neon light. All right, so we're going to click on that shape for the solid. We're going to right click on it, press pre-compose. Now pre-composing it is going to put it into a nesting sequence so that we can go into it and you'll see that it's just that little blue dot. All right, and if you go back, disable this, you'll see that blue dot if we scroll through, you'll see a small little blue dot right over there. All right, so we wanna replace that blue dot with that neon light that we created. We're gonna copy this neon light. We're gonna double click into this solid and we're going to replace it. So we're gonna delete that. Now, the only problem this creates is that when you click it here, you don't see your shape anymore, and that's because this composition is too small. So we're gonna press Control K. We're gonna change it from 20 to 20 to a 1920 by 1080 composition, which is the one we're using. If you zoom out a bit here, you'll see that it's down there. We're gonna click P, and we're just gonna reposition it. Now the reason you make your um, your circle or your shape so small is because there's a lot of glow on the outside of the layer and if you make it too big it's going to bleed into the edge of this frame. Of course you can just make the composition bigger but to save you time um, it doesn't matter the shape of the, of the circle or the shape that you're going to use so just make sure it fits in there and the glow doesn't exceed that. If it does you can always turn down the intensity and that will kind of lessen the glow on the outside. You can play with all these the spread and everything like that and control it. Now let's go back to the main composition. You'll see that it has automatically linked with that solid and now it's tracking through our scene. But you'll see two issues with it. One, it's not passing by the middle of the frame. And the second is that we can see the black layer around it. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna toggle switches over here until you see a mode here where you can click normal and you're gonna change it to screen. Now we got rid of the black part, let's try and reposition it so we have it in a nice place. You're gonna click on this drop down, and we're gonna play with three main things, the orientation, the scale, and the position. So first let's scale it up to a size that looks like it would be for this scene. Now we're gonna orient it facing the camera, tilt it upward a bit. All right, and I'm also gonna just drag this a little bit higher. All right, so we'll see how that looks. We'll let it play back. All right, we didn't exactly go through the middle, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna come to the end right here. We're just gonna reposition it down to where we pass right through the solid. All right, let's see how that turns out. Perfect. Let's play that back at full speed one time. And there you go, guys. The neon object in your scene is as easy as that. All right, now one other tip before you finish this up and try to export it is you're gonna wanna click toggle down here and you're gonna to wanna to enable the motion blur. Now let's see what motion blur does to the neon light. When you toggle it on, you'll see it kind of blurs out the object, so it kind of moves in with the motion, and that gives you a lot more um, dynamic to the shot. So this is with it off, and this is with it on. So I always recommend when you're exporting to turn that on, but if you're just adding a bunch of them in, I'd recommend um, disabling it because it does take up a lot of your RAM. All right guys, and uh, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. And if you could guys just go below and just subscribe to the channel. I do need more followers to make more content like this to benefit you guys and to help the community. So have a good one.